Yo, what is going on guys? I'm here today with another batch of tournament games. I have my Smog on Premier League Week 6 game as well as my Draft Premier League. I think also Week 6 game? I'm not sure. But either way, we're going to start off with the SPL game. So if you guys remember, my last game was against Joey. We had that heated showdown where he narrowly beat me 1-0. And so going forward, I was still playing Sword and Shield OU. Miva Joy was my first Sword, first Sword and Shield OU game for SPL. The four I played before were Sun and Moon OU. Um, so my record at this point was 2-3. and three, Really bad. I won the first two games in Sun, Moon, OU. And then week three, I brought like that Torco Venusaur shit. I got smashed by Metacham. Week four, I brought Sun again. Just played bad. Lost to Rain. Week five, I lost to Joey. That was a pretty close game. I didn't really play bad that game at all. Um, he just played good too, and it was just a close game. And so here I was 2-3. I was hot off three losses in a row, which is hella bad, bro very not agency i was like damn what's going on bro i went for a huge price tag too so i was like oof, this is embarrassing but i got switched out of sun and moon ou and ctc went to go play that my team put me in sword and shield ou because i wanted to switch it up too because i wanted to play some new gen and uh, so this is my second game here so i'm using this team fire team fire team my boy christo passed me this is actually my teammate i've teamed with him the last two or three spls he's amazing always gets like eight wins he plays uh uu but uh, he came down to play OU for us for the tournament this time. So he built this team. Originally, I was just going to use some hyper offense again. But I was like, you know what? I don't want to keep spamming HO. I saw his team, which he like he's my teammate. And he used it the day before me. You can see it's the exact same six in that order. So he used it for this guy, Vito, who was on the our opposing team. And he smashed him, smoked him. So I saw him use this team. And I was like, I kind of like this. Snorlax is something I don't think they'd expect me to bring. People always expect me to bring just like hard hitting mons that I can like show off with. But I was like, dude, I can play a balance pretty nice too. So he gave me this team. So to run through it, it's Curse, Snorlax with Body Slam, Rest, uh, Curse, and Heat Crash is the last move. Heat Crash is very cool. So people normally run Darkest Lariat or uh, Fire Punch, I guess. My boy Crystal had Fire Punch, but I guess he didn't know Heat Crash was there. Darkest Lariat allows you to beat other Snorlax and go through like Corviknight bulk up, but you get PP stalled anyway. I think Darkest Lariat sucks. Heat Crash, on the other hand, lets you kill Aegislash in Blade Form when it KO. It hits Ferrothorn harder than Fire Punch. It's 80 base power versus 75, and it's 120 base power versus Corviknight. It completely smashes Corviknight, which is huge in a game where everybody's using Corviknight. So I knew that would be very important. Uh, my Corviknight is Brave Bird, Defog, Roost, Last Move, Bulk Up, uh, which is very cool. Um, we teched that over U-Turner Iron Head just as a little win con slash just to force things out. And I could see in this game that my Bulk Up Corviknight could definitely win if I removed Rotom because his own Corviknight is just Defog. So bulk up defog was definitely the set to have here. The Dragapult is a set that everyone runs these days. It's Will-O-Wisp, U-Turn, Hex, Draco Meteor. It's just a good ass support mon in general. It's good at throwing out Wisps, um, U-Turning to keep the pressure. Dragapult is just a good uh, no-nonsense mon. Like it's able to bypass substitutes, uh, all that stuff, go through screens. Infiltrator is a very nice ability. But he does have a Spadef uh, Clef, so I knew this thing wasn't going to be that good. But it is fast enough to scare things out. And it also will work as a fighting immunity to Conk Helder. I have Clef here, Mixed Defense, Wish, Protect, Aromatherapy, Moonblast. Aromatherapy is huge because I need to rest off, rest with Snorlax. I don't have Sleep Talk, so Clef will heal that. Uh, this team is also very susceptible to uh, Will-O-Wisp and like, T-Wave and all that shit, so it's good to have this Clef. This Clef is actually teched to be faster than Conk Helder because, I don't know if you guys noticed, but my team gets obliterated by Conk Helder. Fair, Thorn, Hydreigon, and uh, what's it called? Snorlax all get owned. Dragapult dies to Earthquake after Rocks. Uh, Clef gets murdered by Facade or Earthquake, so I had to be faster. It's still not a good switch in. Corviknight has Brave Bird, so at least it can hit it kind of hard, but Drain Punch still, t uh, I think, two KOs after Brave Bird recoil, so that's not the greatest of switch-ins. Ferrothorn is Stealth Rock, physically defensive to stop Draco Vish type rain stuff, whatever. And then Hydreigon is the only set I'll ever use for Hydreigon. Nasty Plot Life or Brazy set with Wish support from Clef. So his team is pretty similar, I guess. It's like just bulky offense, but he has different breakers than me. His is more offensive, so let's get into it. I lead off with Dragapult as he leads off with Hydreigon. Him leading off with Hydreigon led me to believe that he was Scarf, so I switched out turn one regardless. And as you can see, he switched out before me, which means he's 100% Scarf, as I bring in Ferrothorn. So now he knows that I know he's Scarf, as well as he knows that I'm not Scarf. So, I mean, that's some knowledge to keep in the back of my head. So, Ferrothorn was a good play for me because I knew he was either going to Dark Pulse or U-Turn. Either one is fine. I mean, if he U-Turns... Actually, I thought he might hard switch too because I could be a potential Scarf Dragapult lead, but I wasn't sure because again, my teammate Crystal literally used this versus this guy's team, so like he would have seen his team make it, and Sick Crystal like destroyed this guy, so I mean all the sets were revealed and stuff too, but anyway, it's fine. 
Um, he goes into Conk here as I go for the switch into my Clef. He has Stealth Rock Seismitoad, so I wasn't sure what his Clef could be, but it could be very likely that his Clef was, uh, what's it called? Life Orb Flamethrower. So I didn't want to lose my Ferrothorn right there, so I go to my own Clef to pivot that. Unfortunately, he brings in Conk. Uh, so if I went for knockoff there, that would have been epic because I would have gotten the biggest threat out. If I knocked the conk right there, it would have been an easy 6-0 immediately. But he gets the burn orb activated as I just fire off a moon blast in case he wants to stay in. Um, I switch out here into Ferrothorn as he goes for the thunder wave. I was like, okay, so this is probably not fire attack. It's probably like thunder wave calm mind or thunder wave aromatherapy wish. I don't know. Anyway, I put on my rocks here as he goes into Corviknight. Now here I go into Dragapult. I could have knocked off the Corviknight. Uh, I guess I went to Dragapult just so I could go for the will o -Wisp because I wanted to see how much Hex did to Clef at a later time. But it's pretty obvious that his Clef is specially defensive if he brought this thing in so confidently. Plus U-Turn is doing 9% and I'm no attack. He goes for Moonblast here, probably just uh, seeing if I would want to go for Hex, which is a garbage play, so obviously I wouldn't do that. Um, he goes into Conk as I set up the Stealth Rocks yet again. Now I go into Corviknight as he goes for the Earthquake. I went to Corviknight because I knew he was going to try to predict my Clef or Dragapult. And so I went to Corviknight because I, could, I knew I could not only take a Drain Punch, but he was more than likely going to predict. Conk, like I said, is very good versus my team. And a big part of beating Conk will not letting this thing recover with Drain Punches. So I know that even though I'm running a balance, I have to play a little bit offensively so that I'm able to handle a Mon like Conk Helder. Because if I play offensively enough with this balance, like I make these mid-ground switches and stuff like that, I can kind of like mess with his head because he's like, damn, why does he keep going into this when he has like quote-unquote supposed counters and Clef and Dragapult? But I'm going to the mid-ground specifically to stop Conk Helder to ever heal. Um, and I know these types of plays will annoy him as well because he won't know like my timing for when I'll actually go to Clef or Dragapult. So either way, yeah, I go for rocks again here. He Ironhead flinches me just to, I guess, see my spread. I don't know. Um, I switch out here and I go into Corviknight yet again knowing Earthquake is coming uh, and it works out great because he switches like I said I had Brave Bird I believe I double here into my Clef or my Dragapult I go into my Dragapult here expecting him to most likely go into Corviknight or Rotom but he goes into Clef instead you turn out of here this is a really nice set with OSP you turn it's good support his team is extremely walled by Ferrothorn if you don't realize that like he Scarf Hydreigon which is an awful set in my opinion Life Orb is so much better. Scarf is so weak. And yeah, his whole team gets walled by Ferrothorn very badly. He goes into Corviknight here. I think I knock it off, right? Pretty sure. Knock off that thing's leftovers, which is just nice. I mean, it's okay. I go into Hydreigon here. Now here, oh my god, this is the Lord Agency play. So I knew, I knew this man was like, okay, if this Hydreigon Nasty Plots, I'll be in a world of pain. But I know he also isn't going to stay in on Nasty Plot, because... He could be like, oh, what if I just go for the fire move? So in his head, he's thinking, okay, should I go Clef or what? But I know, I know he might be thinking like, oh, this guy's definitely thinking of, of me going from an offensive position. I mean, from a defensive position. So in his head, I know he's expecting me um, to like set up or whatever. So I know for this reason, he's going to go into his Scarf Hydreigon on this turn. Because Clef is such an obvious switch. Clef is such an obvious switch. I know he's going to predict the Nasty Plot or Flash Cannon or whatever and just mid-ground to Hydreigon. So because of that, I don't even think, I instantly click the Draco Meteor knowing he's going to pivot into Scarf Hydreigon. And that play pays off huge dividends because he does not go into Clef and he does not stay in. He goes into Hydreigon as I predicted. I knew he was going to predict either the Fire Move or the Nasty Plot. Um, and it works out amazing. And that's a true agency play, man. And so you know, you know, you know, I got to say, check out the merch. That's my smooth transition for the day. Oh, shit. Wait, let me get rid of the sub goal. Whoa, whoa, hold on. Yes, the agency merch is still alive for the next few days. The embroidered pack. Go ahead and check that out. You guys have been showing me so much love. I think the sale, I sold like 150 yesterday, in fact, which was just incredible. Just yesterday alone. But yeah, thank you guys for showing love. The embroidered pack is still here until the 20th, which is this Thursday. So go check that out. Very premium quality hoodies. The embroidered collection. Don't miss. The coupon code, I think, is expired by now. It was candy for 10% off, but sometimes this stuff runs over, so it might still work. But back into the game. So... I destroyed that Hydreigon with Draco Meteor, which is really nice for me. I mean, it's Scarf, so it's not like it was going to wall break, but it's great that now my own Hydreigon is the fastest one on the field, and at a, any point, we'll start, like, fucking shit up. So he goes into this guy. I go into Dragapult. Rocks go up. I do this just so I can Wisp, but I think I U-turn here, knowing that he's going to go for that. I bring a Ferrothorn again. So here I'm like, whatever. I'll trade Rocks before I defog Rocks. I don't know why I, want, I was under this mentality, but I was. So... He goes into this guy. Now here I go into Clefable knowing the drain's coming as he does just go for the drain. It does a hell of damage, man. 35% is is a lot. 
but I have to limit this guy. I am faster. I think he understands that because Drain did so much. I don't know. I go for Wish here. I'm faster than this Corv too. I switch onto the Hydreigon here knowing the Roost is coming. Uh, well, Roost or Defog, but I don't think Defog's coming because he needs to keep rocks up. I get healed by the Wish. Flamethrower right here. Do a nice 65 as he U-turns out into who? Clef. Yeah, he doesn't go into Conk. I would've gone Conk there, but he's making defensive plays. Goes for a wish there. If I nasty plotted, game over. Well, no, because he had conk. I go for a wish as he thunder waves. Um, I don't really know why I wished. I'm pretty sure I aromatherapy this turn. Yeah. And so in turn, I also heal my Ferrothorn. I go into Ferrothorn here as he goes to Corviknight and takes the wish. I go into Pult here on the Roost. Yeah. Clef comes in as I go hard for the Hex because I know he's going to switch and he keeps bringing in that Clef for free. And I'm like, okay, I need to see the chip damage. Only does 40%, which confirms to me this is extremely specially defensive. He goes for Protect because it's basically a riskless play. Even if I hard switch into something, there's nothing that can threaten him fast enough that he doesn't get a free wish afterwards. I U turn out of here. I know at some point I'm going to have to bring in my Snorlax and start applying some type of pressure just because nothing else can really force out Clef. My Hydreigon can't kill Clef. It's at 48% after rocks too, so obviously I need to wish that guy first. I go for Leech here, expecting, or not expecting, but not wanting to allow Conk to come in for free. I think I Leech again. Let's see. I knock off. Okay, whatever. He goes into this guy, he iron heads me. I leech. Um, I think I power whip here. Yeah. I just power whip just to do it in case he wants to go conk just on some bullshit. This is mainly a conditioning play to make sure he doesn't hard switch into conk. Uh, he goes into clef as I double back into my own clef, knowing that because I have the leech suit on him, iron head can't out can't stall me out anyway. I go into fair throne because I don't want my clef getting thunder waved. If clef gets thunder waved, it can put me in a potential situation where conk elder will defeat me. Did I leech again? No, I doubled into Snorlax. Nice play by me. So I doubled into Snorlax there, knowing that he's either going to Moonblast or Switch or whatever. Now here, I go for a hard Body Slam, knowing he's not going to risk the curse. So that works out really nicely for me. Body Slam does a good 33%. Now here, I go into Clef again, knowing he's most likely going to go for the Drain. Probably should have gone Drago, but whatever. If you want Earthquake, I still covered it. Now here, I make a really, really, really bad play. I go for the Wish. I see Facades. I guess in his head he didn't know if he was faster or not, or he was covering the Wish. Either way, Wish was definitely a misplay. I don't know why I did it. I'm faster than his Corbinite. Even if he goes to Corbinite, it's going to be a 50. Wish does, I mean, Moonless is like 14%. It's at 36%, so I just switch out. I guess I was just afraid of the potential of him passing a Wish to this at some point. I don't know. I probably should just moon blast it. He was probably playing for choke because I had been pretty much outplaying him every single turn up until this point. But then sacking my clef was really bad because now I put myself in a position to lose to Conk. And up to this point, Conk literally didn't get off any hits. Um, he failed like hella times with Earthquake. Uh, and then Drain Punch, I, I could, whatever. I messed up there for sure though. I sacked my clef. Um, and at this point, I was like, uh oh, I definitely, I definitely messed up. So you turn out of here on the clef. Um, and I bring in my lax again because I know I need to start putting on some pressure. Take the wish, but that's whatever. I know I get a free curse here because he's not going to go hard into Conk Helder on a potential body slam. Um, I even gave him ups in the chat. I told him that was a fire play. I told him that was a fire play, man. Oh, my, my, but I choked rather, but whatever. Um, but yeah, I curse up here. Take the toxic. In comes Corviknight again. Yep, body slam. Paralyze that guy. Oh, no, I don't paralyze that guy now here I'm able to show the epic tech of heat crash, which he was not expecting pretty funny um, Get rid of that thing immediately, which is nice. It was an 82% It could have been annoying later on so it's good to get rid of that. He goes into conk. I'm plus two defense I love a drain punch, but I'll die to poison afterwards and I won't even kill him because he'll recover So I'm like forget that I'll just go into drag a pulp. This guy's still low at 29% a U-turn out yet again, I believe, knowing he's going to keep the conk. Because if he loses conk, he knows Lax wins, right? So I know he's not going to put himself into some stupid position like that. Um, I leech here or what? Whip. Knock off the leftovers. Okay, I knock. Because I know I have a free knockoff here. He can't go into Seismitoad. He can't go into Rotom. And Kong dies to Power Whip at this point. Going to Corv here as he probably goes for Wish. Yeah. I know he's going to stay into Thunder Wave here, so I just bulk up. Here he goes hard into Rotom. Uh, I bucked up again expecting him to wish. This is bulk up defog, like I said. So now this thing, I'm assuming is like sub, so I have to go for Brave Bird. He subs up once. I know this thing is Dark Pulse Discharge, but I also know he's gonna try to keep subbing until I get parried. It could be Hydro Pump Dark Pulse, but I think they run Discharge. They should run Discharge. 
Anyway, uh, I know he's going to keep subbing, and at this point, I'm like, wait, Corbinite is still a possible win condition, even paralyzed, even though I lost my aromatherapy. I know I can still win. This guy subs up again. Now, here I make a great play. I, I know that he knows that this goes through the sub, right? So, I'm assuming he's going to go into Clef anyway and try to keep this guy. So, I U-turn out, which was really good offensive momentum for me. I'm going to bring back in Corviknight. Now, the Corviknight is paralyzed, but I know I can still put on the pressure because the Rotom is weakened. So, he goes for Wish. I go for bulk up here. Now, fortunately for me on the next turn, I actually do not get full parried, and I'm able to kill this thing with a Brave Bird, which is really nice. If he passed the wish there, it would've just been way longer. I mean, I still had outs. I had two dragons and Ferrothorn, so like, whatever, and lax. Here he goes for Drain Punch. I got plus one defense, though, so if I kill this, I win. But he gets a para. I was like, uh-oh, uh-oh, not like this, bro. Please, not like this, bro. He goes for another Drain Punch. Oh, no, bro. Oh, no, bro. Another para. I was like, okay, I can lose now. I got scared, bro. Third drain punch. I was like, please, Lord, no para. Unfortunately, the agency prevails. And I blow that thing up with a Brave Bird gone. And so fortunately now, I even said in my battle, oh, shit, the agency came through. So now, fortunately, Snorlax has the dub sealed up completely. I rest up right there. Um, and at this point, it's going to be impossible for him to kill me. He goes into Seismitoad. He has Earthquake, but that only does 24% because <laughs> Lex is so hard body. Curse up, rest, curse up again, rest, and then he forfeits because Lax is just going to kill everybody. So, I win that 78 turn game, low balance versus balance. Yeah, I was happy with how I played this game besides sacking the clef. I think besides that, I played really well um, and outstalling him. I think he could have played more proactively. He had a good matchup with Kunk Helder, um, but I think I just got him on the turns. I feel like he had a better matchup, but either way paid off i'm happy to finally win after my dry spell of like three weeks god damn had to put on some agency plays this game so i win i actually was the, the winning game for the week from our team we were up six two and then i won you need seven wins to win the week so i was the seventh win we won the week it was great cbb won ctc won whole squad won so yeah well done but that's in like they're my teammates ctc's playing gen 7 ou cbb's playing gen 6 ou i'm playing gen 8 ou bro three-headed snake but let's move on to my next game draft league oh wait not this one draft league uh it's a draft Premier League week six. So this is my matchup versus this guy's team. So this is Clover 48, my opponent. We were both 3-0 going into this, so he did the matchup. Anyway, looking at his team, uh, I knew Obstagoon was gonna be a big threat already. I prepped for it though, obviously. I mean I prepped to it the best I could. The hippo is max defense body press. I knew Conk was gonna be a big ass threat too. Um but I knew Obstagoon was a bigger threat. And then the rest of the stuff is just like standard. This draft league is very like you have like standard teams. So my team is teched for his, obviously. I have a uh, max defense body press hippo, which is like my best check to conk and obstagoon. I have uh, assault vest, grim snarl, I think, something like that, with uh, darkest lariat, play rough, power whip, high horsepower. They had a salazzle in their options, so we ran high horsepower. Obviously, they didn't bring it, so it was useless. Excadrill was a uh, assault vest as well, I think, to deal with Noivern, uh, sand rush. Sigalith was life orb, three attack with psychic, dazzling gleaming heat wave. Unfortunately, that's Sylveon. Um, and then Salazzle was just nasty plot, overheat, heavy duty boost. So with that, let's get right into the game. So he leads off the Obstagoon as I lead off a Grim Snarl. Now here, I think it's pr I was, thought it was pretty obvious he would just switch out because I could have superpower or play rough. So I go for a fire punch straight off the bat, trying to hit his Ferrothorn, but he just sets up. I don't really get that play because play rough would have messed this up, but regardless, it works out. I mean, it lives play rough actually, but I could have had superpower, but. I don't know. I guess he was very confident I didn't. Either way, that's messed up because now I'm going to lose my uh, hippo immediately. Meanwhile, if I play rough, I could have sacked hippo the next turn and it would have been great. But unfortunately, hippo has to go down here. Um, and that thing would have been good to keep, I guess, for conk. Either way, yeah, that thing goes down. Now I go into my Excadrill uh, to revenge kill this thing because I want to be able to get off an adamant earthquake on Seismitoad or Ferrothorn. If he goes to it, he goes to conk here. Here I make a trash play. I just stay in an earthquake. I figured, you know, this guy's 3-0. <laughs> he must have been playing some, you know, good games. I figured maybe he tried to predict my sick lift, go for Ice Punch or Thunder Punch. So I just stayed in Earthquake. But obviously, that shit did not work whatsoever. So that was a really horrible play. I just stayed in and threw it out when I needed it for Noivern and Sylveon. Very bad play. Very, very bad play. So now he brings in Sylveon here. I Psychic on the switch to 32%. Get the sped up drop, which is going to be kind of clutch. He switches out here and goes into Noivern as I Psychic again do 69%. He Draco Meteors here. I stayed in expecting the Hurricane because I have Grim Snarl, but I live Draco anyway. He's not Specs or anything like that. A Dazzling Gleam here in case he has Roost, so I'm able to get rid of that threat right there and then. 
Sylveon comes back in, so I go into Salazzle. I know the potential of Psyshock is there, but whatever. He goes for Yawn. Now here, I'm afraid to switch out because you could Hyper Voice very easily and just kill my thing. Whoever I go to would die to Hyper Voice, or Moonblast rather, because he could expect my Kamo to be soundproof. Um, anyway, yeah, Sludge Bomb the Seismitoad. And then I'm like, uh oh, because I see no item. He sets up a rain dance. At this point, I was like, damn, I'm about to lose the life orb seismitoad. Here I make a, another great play, and by great I mean terrible. I sack my living Sigilyph to keep my sleep fodder Salazzle, but I figured maybe I could cheese it back with Salazzle if I wake up in nasty plot somewhere, and then sweep him. But I wasn't sure. But that's why I kept it. I go into Grimmsnarl here because I have the power whip, which is very obvious. He goes into Sylveon as I power whip and miss. Um, he's max pedef. I don't know if Power Whip plus Player of Killed though. I, a, I am a Salt Vest though, so I could have stayed in there. He makes a good double to Toad there, and I was like, ooh, okay. I sack Salazzle. So it's looking very bad for me at this point. So I go into my Kamo'o. Kamo'o is obviously teched for his team. It's Swords Dance, Drain Punch, Iron Head, or Swords Dance, Drain Punch, Dragon Cloud, Poison Jab, Expert Belt. Um, with a good amount of HP, and it's Adamant too. So he goes for Ice Punch. For some reason, this dude is Rain Dance Physical, not Life Orb. He's like had like all the worst options. Like, he had all the options that would, like, make him lose. If he was special, it could have 2-KO'd me. If he was Life Orb, it could have 2-KO'd me. But for some reason, not only is it not Damp Rock, it's not Life It's none of the items that could have saved him. So, whatever. Either way, I get plus 3 um, as he Ice Punches. Now, here we were actually afraid of Quick Attack Sylveon. My team told me in the beginning of the uh, week when we were prepping, they're like, yo, he's going to bring Quick Attack Sylveon. But it's not. It's like a Wish Protect. So, I just Poison Jab knocked that out. Dragon Claw on Calder and then Dragon Punch Ferrothorn. Yeah, I just put this video, I mean this battle at the end of my SPL game because like this game was pretty bad. I played really bad, but then I just won because my Kamo <laughs> carried. Yeah, I don't know, not a very quality game. But fortunately, yeah, I win. Draft Premier League, I'm now 4-0, SPL 3-3. My team is first in Draft Premier League and we're th second or third in SPL, I think third. So, so far so good. Playoff space for both. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So, hope y'all enjoyed. Shouts to Agency. I'll see you soon. Peace.